On this week's episode, we're going to talk about educating young people in our industry. Welcome to the show where we tackle the tough questions submitted by installers, estimators, project managers, customers, and anybody in ICT. We are connecting at the human level so that we can connect the world. If you're watching this show on YouTube, would you mind hitting the subscribe button and the bell button to be notified when new content is being created? If you're listening to us on one of the podcast platforms, would you mind giving us a five-star rating, please? And if it's not a five-star, shoot me an email and let me know what I can do to make it better. Those two little steps helps us take on that algorithm and get this content out to more people in the industry so we can educate, encourage, and enrich the lives of the people in our industry. What are you doing Thursday night, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time? We do an after hours live show where you get to ask your favorite RCDD, that would be me, your favorite questions about installation, design, certification, estimation, project management, career advice. I can hear you now, but Chuck, I'm driving home at that time. I don't wanna be watching the phone while I'm driving a company vehicle. It might be a safety violation. Okay, they're recorded and you can watch them either on YouTube or off of our webpage at letstalkcabling.com. This week, I put out a post on all my social media platforms. What is your biggest frustration about the ICT industry? And I'm gonna make shows about every one of those responses. But one of the responses came back, and let me read this to you. It was, Lack of skill or motivation by a younger generation, pathetic labor pool. Well, ironically, I already had this interview already scheduled up. So the person I'm bringing on the show today is a fellow trainer with lots of experience, and I'm looking really forward to this interview. Shelly Olmstead, how are you doing today? Well, I am great. Thanks for inviting me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so let's start off with, we always have to start with a good foundation. Right. So people understand who you are and why should they listen to you? Right. Give us a 30 second highlight of your career and, and the certifications and or accomplishments that you might have done. Well, uh, why they should listen to me? Um, I don't know. That's a great question. But I will tell you, as far as the industry goes, I always say I married into this industry 30 years ago. Um, my husband was a tech one when we got married. Um, and over time, just many of our friends were in the same field. And about 10 years ago, uh, one of them was the VP of operations at IS Communications. And he called me and he asked me if I'd be interested in talking to him about a job. I was like, I don't know. I, I've been in the staffing and recruiting industry, ha had my own consulting thing, training, helping with training and helping businesses. Uh, with with career plans and things like that. Um, but I met him for lunch and honestly, it changed my life. Um, he talked about this vision that he and IS had about um, investing in their people and not just adding a few classes here and there. And there was passion and and had all these innovative ideas to sharpen skill sets and, you know, and in turn, give customers the experience that they were promised. And I was like, this company gets it. And it wasn't to be in a consultant role. It was it was to come on board and be a part of, of, of the team. And over the years, it's just evolved and we've tied our quality and our development, our employee development pieces together. Here I am, that's that's what I'm doing. Well, it obviously must be working because you are considered one of the top tier companies in the in the industry. I mean, I'm I'm well familiar with with your company, even before the the other relationship that 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 there is existing between Chuck and and IES, um, so I've been familiar with you guys a long time, and you guys are obviously doing right. I put you in. There's a a group of about four or five contractors that I would lump into what I would call the gold standard, and that's obviously you guys. So you guys are doing it right. So here's the first question. Well, thank you. I I really appreciate that. Um, well, yeah, we really we really get behind the motto, you know, if we train people right the first time and clearly and communicate uh, what those expectations that they are and we provide them all the resources like training and career paths and, and mentorship, you know, the quality is going to be there. And we really believe that, you know, you've probably heard this said before, but when we get the employee experience right, we'll get the customer experience right. And uh, we've proven, uh, you know, not only 
to the industry, I feel, but also just internally to our company that this department adds value and, and gives the end users we service um, that experience. So thank you for saying gold standard. I like that. I'm not a problem. I, and I do, I've, I've done a lot of work for Marriott's over the year and I stayed a lot of Marriott's cause I travel all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and one of the things I always hear JW Marriott always said is if you take care of your employees, they'll take care of your customers. So True. you need to really invest in, in your people. It, it, it'll, it'll pay a hundredfold. And unfortunately, the training program is usually the first thing that gets cut yeah. when the economy goes down, when you need it the most, you need it the most. You're so here comes the first right. question. Here comes the first question. So there's a lot of talk, a lot of noise right now about the younger generation, the younger generation just doesn't want to learn. They, they feel entitled. They don't want to learn. They don't want to climb the ladder. What do you find in your sphere of influence? You know, uh, I kind of see that in a different way. Um, what I've seen is that the younger generation is interested in bettering themselves. They are. And, and so that traditional climbing uh, scenario, it just might look different now. And I think sometimes that we need to, as leadership, take a step back and say, okay, you know, their perspective is their reality. It's not that they don't have talent and skills because they definitely do, um, but maybe we need to stop looking at it in the traditional sense because, okay, so let's just think about it. You know, they love technology, right? And, you know, they might not remember the pager in the fax machine, right? <laughs> but they've grown up with some of the greatest technological advances in history. And that is what they're building from. So they're going to be the next generation to build on top of what their real reality has been. Um, and I feel like by showing them that the ICT industry is the background of all that technology that they love and that runs their lives, um, that that increases their interest. And we, we've used that as how we're promoting and recruiting lately. Um, and being here at, at IES as a technology innovator, that's what we do, um, is really helped us let them see what the true career path is. And, and we kind of flip the script a little bit um, right. and it's been successful. Absolutely. I, and it's, it's funny, you and I, I think, are, are right on, along the same lines. I remember when I was coming up through the ranks, people were saying the same thing about me when I was a young kid. Right? right. And you hit the nail on the head. It's how they, it's their learning styles. Right. So as a, as a good manager, you've got to, you've got to, it's like a customer. You got to think about how do I reach that person or those individuals where it's going to make the impact the most. Right. And I'll yeah. just give you a real quick example. TikTok, <laughs> TikTok. I stayed away from TikTok with my platform because it was that dancing video thing. <laughs> There are a lot of low voltage people on TikTok. There's there's one guy, Sean Rep. He's got like a hundred thousand followers. There's a lot of low voltage, and 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 my target is the younger people. So I got to go where they are. So mm. you know, you, you got to think outside of the box for that kind yeah. of stuff. You really that, do. And that's our that's not only our uh, future, but those are the people we need to get into the workforce now, and teach them this stuff because you know they don't they don't don't have college college courses for this. Right. right. You know, we can attract and, and I love it. Use TikTok, use where they are at. And, and as you know, as a good trainer, you got to know your audience. You got to be, be coming in at their level. And yes. what, you know, and what we created here at IS internally was, you know, we got to express ourselves in a way that makes sense to people. So what is it? And it's through technology. Yes, we have a ton of in-person classes, but we had to evolve with e-learning and virtual instructor and set up the streaming platforms and, and all those things. So while the traditional climbing the ladder has worked in the past, and there's definitely still some good things about that, uh, we have to just look at how do we make it better and, and communicate in a way that's gonna make sense to them. Yeah, I think their 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 non traditional way of looking at things, and I've gotten this from from being a trainer. I think it's I think it's refreshing because you know you you can take three people and ask them how to fix something who've been in the industry for years and years and years, and you'll get the same answer from all three of them. And yeah, it might get done that way, but then somebody who comes fresh with a fresh set of eyes, they they see it with a perspective that the other people don't. And it might even be better. The, the key is that those people have to be open to it. And I think that's where that comment comes from. It comes from fear because they, they see these, 
these younger people coming in and they approach training and, and, and jobs and career differently than we did. And they, and I think the people who express frustration with the younger generation, I think they just don't truly understand them. You get to take some time. And I love how you said, you got to know your audience. When I sit in a class as a trainer, um, I, I'm there for two reasons. One, to learn the content. Two, I'm there to evaluate that trainer because I want to pick up something that trainer's doing so I can apply it. Absolutely. And, and I can always tell a good trainer in the very beginning of the class because they're going to do some kind of an activity or some kind of a question right out of the gate to gauge their audience, right? Yeah. You know, how many years experience does everybody have, right? Because the worst thing you could do is try to teach the color code to somebody who's got 20 years of experience, right? You just, you're going to, you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them. True. And, and in turn, um, the person with 20 years of experience has to also keep an open mind that, Hey, some, everybody's an expert in something in them. If you, uh, if you come into that scenario with your mind open that, Hey, you know what? I haven't lived in their shoes and had their perspective. There could be stuff about technology or, a quicker, more efficient way to do stuff that in my 20 years, I just haven't come across yet because I've been so, right. I've been doing it my way. It's been my way or the highway. And I haven't let some of these other, other influences in. So um, I think it's two way street. I think it's two way yeah. street. And if you couple that with our industry, right now, we work in the communications industry, but I look at it like a bicycle, right? A bicycle has wheels, a handlebar, a seat, a frame, the, you know, I might be a subject matter expert in structure cabling, the frame, but when it comes to installing active components for access control and voice IP, VoIP and, and so, I don't know that stuff. There are no experts in our industry. And, and I love how you said you got to have an open mind. I've been in this industry for 40 plus years. And I will tell people right out of the gate, your goal every day should to be learn one new thing every day because you don't know Absolutely. everything. You don't know everything. That's, that's our motto in the training department here. Yeah, continuous improvement. Everybody can learn something new every, every day. day. So. Even the, even us old people like me. <laughs> so so you obviously are running a training program. You get to train a lot of great people and stuff. In your sphere of influence, what do you find is the skill that's the weakest amongst all of them? Not 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 individual people, but as a group, what do you think is the weakest area? Honestly, I don't know if it's one thing specifically technically. What I do know is that you know, so we employ thousands of people. And technology changes so fast that sometimes it's difficult to deliver the latest and greatest training to everybody. So, um, you know, at our, our development list of all the things that we're continually adding as far as additional classes or, you know, adding content or improving content because, you know, now Bixie has released this, they've changed that or, you know, something else has changed uh, when 3456 came out. Uh, we're now, or business that we're adding, you know, with your controls now, we're adding this to security, whatever. I, I just feel like sometimes the, the weakest part of that is not being able to deliver it fast enough to the thousands of people that work for us. So, um, cause as you also know, we have, you know, our industry, the job titles within our industry have grown over, I mean, the 10 years I've been here. You know, not you said you've been in the industry 40 years. I mean, it used to be, hey, what, you had a technician and a PM and an estimator. Mm -hmm. And now we've got, you know, there's so many other levels in there that sometimes that's also a challenge to, to get it all out. Our industry is horrible, horrible with job titles. Yes. Because you can take somebody who has a business card that says, well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a project manager at my old company, so you should hire me as a project manager. And then when you get them in and interview them, you're going to find out they were just a glorified foreman because right. a project manager is going to be tracking schedules and material costs and labor costs and managing change orders and scope creep and all that stuff. And, and they just were given that title by the other company because, you know, the guy needed a raise and they had to find a way to give him a raise. And they're not really a project manager. <laughs> No, not in the traditional sense, yeah, or not in a, a defined sense, especially in a in a bigger organization. It's like, no, there's a lot more right. that goes into that uh, that role. And if you throw sure. that person into a scenario where if you don't do your due diligence as an employer and really evaluate them when they come on board and find out, no, they're not really a project manager, you'll send them out on a job site with a general contractor with a 
PMP certified project manager there Absolutely. and they will tear them up, tear them up. Every time. <laughs> exactly right. And then your HR department definitely hears about it. Yep, exactly. Right. But well, I thought you hired a project manager. <laughs> His resume said, <laughs> yeah, nope. Yeah, yeah, if we believed all the resumes, you know, everybody, don't lie on everybody resumes, would be right? executives, right? It's, yeah. Yeah. People don't lie on resumes. No, never, that never. never happened. Or can't have a business card made to say whatever. I think mine says Empress of the Universe or something. Oh, I, I like know, that. I like, like that. <laughs> that is cool. That is cool. So let's ask you the flip side of that. So I asked you what you thought was the weakest. What do you think is the the, the area of strength when it comes to training people now? What are they um, strongest in? I feel like... For us, it's pretty anything technical. I mean, we've pretty got we've got that dialed in. Bixie's been great. We have six Bixie ATFs. Um, we're probably adding another one. Uh, so there's a lot of technically. I think we we've again there's so many job titles now that fall into that. Um, I think there's a lot of great information out there. Again, it's just as technology changes. Um, as manufacturers develop and lit next latest and greatest, I just don't sometimes think that information is just delivered quick enough. Yeah. Um, since you mentioned Bixie, mm -hmm. and I know Bixie is not the only place out there that gives certifications, but they're the sure. most well known in our industry. What do you find is the attitude towards certification? Because one of the most one of the most hottest subjects I can do a post on is about certifications because I'll get the people to get on there and say, yeah, you need your certifications. And I'll get other people to say, well, I've been doing this for 20 years. I know more than that person with the certification. What, what, are, what and, is, what is your thoughts on and certification? Some, you know, and a lot of times they're not wrong, right? They're not right. wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, I, we have seen, we have definitely seen growth in the number of interested people in certifications. Um, but it's interesting because a lot of our customers are driving that. They're interested in having the certified folks uh, on their site. So again, adding, you know, Bixie, or you know, that's speaking of, you know, in the structured world, but you know, for for our specialty systems, you know, CTS, CTSI, you know, you know, on, on AB sides, things like that. So, uh, yeah, depend. No matter what the um, scope is, it seems there has been an increase in that. And again, it's just getting it delivered fast enough. Right. See, I didn't realize you, could, you guys did, uh, I mean, I knew you did AV stuff, but I didn't realize you put an emphasis on the AV certifications. You, you guys have just now moved to the top part of the gold standard. Oh, well, would you like me to tell you everything I asked us? <laughs> you keep doing that. You guys might be at the very top of the gold standard. <laughs> You have to I have knock no down the with, other company. I have no problem with that, Chuck. Let's go. <laughs> so we do jazz. We do life safety. We do Wi-Fi. We do everything. Right. We do everything. Um, we're, we're proud to say that generally, you know, with our customers, um, yeah, structured cable's been our bread and butter for, you know, the, the whole time we've been in business. But um, we, again, going back to having that customer experience, you know, hey, we have those conversations. Well, what do you, what else do you need? Well, yeah, we do that, or we do that, or if we don't, we will learn. If that's something that's up and coming, we're we're flexible. And again, going back to the initial conversation I had uh, with Matt Sims to be recruited into IES, they're nimble and innovative. They're willing to take a look at it and take you know invest in and whatever the future for the industry is, and that helps everybody. Right, getting every, you know, getting people that experience, getting them the um, exposure to those different areas, will definitely make a huge, huge difference. And yes, making sure then, it, having the responsibility then to your employees to say, okay, well, if we're now doing that line of business. We will help you get certified in that line of business. That's that's the right thing to do. Yeah, one of the one of the flip sides. A lot of people don't think about certification for their employees, is once you start getting people certified you got to track those to make sure that they don't let them lapse <laughs> yep yeah so here we went when i started 10 years ago we had four people in the training department i have 41 people now in the training um, department training and quality department wow. is 41 people and it's because of our quality they're called quality training specialists because they are the trainers and then the other ones that go and inspect the work to make sure, hey, what what's taught to what they taught actually sunk in and was translated into that work product. 
Um, so that's how that that's how I got that strange title, Director of Quality and Development. It's not usually two things you see together, mm -hmm. um, but we did it that way because we felt like going back to making sure that our employee was taken care of because that's going to take care of our customer. If you marry those, you know, those two concepts and ideas together, then you, you can do that all, all in one team. So that's why we have so many um, and we're absolutely dedicated to, to quality control. And yeah, and that just kind of shows the, the depth of the, the intent of, of the company, right? Because anybody can train their people, but if you don't go out to verify that they're doing it, and it's not, and, the, and I'm not saying that people will sit in a class and then just deliberately choose not to use the skills they learn. At best, if, if you're in a classroom environment without any hands-on component, at best, you might remember 25% six months after that day. So it's it's reinforcing. I would get, I would argue that percentage is probably less. Yeah, it, it's amazing. If you don't, it goes back to if you don't use it, you lose it. Yep. And if you don't have somebody holding you accountable to that, you'll lose yep. it. So and, that's that's what that's what it's there for. And we it is out of you know for lack of a better term, it's out of love for the employees. Look, we want to help you. We want you to remember this and become better. And if you do want to quote unquote climb the ladder, hey, this is going to give you. That opportunity and will open that door because you are now somebody who has become an expert at that and hopefully with all the other soft skill stuff that we've also worked on um you're dependable you're a good communicator you're reliable to to get the job done in in that time frame i mean that's how you take care of them yep. is, is holding them accountable and i love the fact that you got people going out there doing qa inspections um, because I was a QA inspector for a large contractor for many, many years. Oh, yeah? I had, I had somebody in last night's After Hours Live ask me, what does it take to be a good QA, QC person? And one of the things, that I think the most important thing is how you deliver the results of the inspection, right? If you go in there, because you, you should always review, you know, take the QA form, and you should always review it with the person that you were inspecting. But you, know, you always want to start off with the good stuff. Hey, I like the way you dressed the cable. I like the way you did this. I love the way you did that. You did a really good job of here. And then you shift and you say, now let's look at some things that we can improve on next time. Yeah. You use it as a mini training session. If you, if, you, if you go there, you did this wrong. You did that wrong. They're not going to listen to you, period. And you just lost all your effectiveness of a training program, right? So. Are you do you work here? That's like exactly the message. Yes, the, you can hit, hit it on the head. Um, you know, I always say, especially when we're, we're recruiting um, for these roles is, you know, we can obviously make sure you can get trained technically on just about anything. And if you your work, you want to get a certain certification, hey, I know where you can get that, right? That's what we do. Mm -hmm. But I can't make you care. I could teach you probably just about anything technically, but I can't make you care. I can't make you give a crap about that team or about that person individually or about that customer. That's something you either do or you don't, you, you're driven. That's an internal thing. And that's hard to stand a resume. And that's hard to, that's hard to, you know. It's hard to teach, that's ingrained. Then, yeah, you can't always vet that out in an interview. That is through action. That is when rubber hits mm -hmm. the road and you're out there whether you're you're really showing and, and caring about those people because those people are the ones that blossom and turn into the next yep. and the next and the next. Yep. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. One of the, one of the things I found as a, as a, cause I was the peak performance manager, <laughs> fancy title for, for running the QA department, peak PPM. performance, yeah, peak performance, performance manager. manager. Okay. And one of the ways that I found that you can help, to address people to get that that, that skill set there to really have the drive to want to improve is through a mentoring program right mm -hmm. so do you guys have a mentoring program there at IES well we do in the sense that we have a couple of different ways that happen so through the quality program as you said you know we we are that outside influence to help develop employees we can be walking a job and go <clears throat> okay hey hey everybody real quick I see what you did here hey, huddle up let me show you this might be a more efficient way, or did you know that this is, you know, a better way or whatever, you know, so we have those moments and those opportunities. Um, when new hires come on board, we have them paired up with people as you know, most people would want to put the new guy with a, an experienced guy, right, is generally mm -hmm. how that works out. 
Um, but we also have a, we have a strategic action team through our leadership program um, that they actually develop ideas around these types of how do we mentor better? How do we? So um, coming up with a very structured, more formal one is the goal. Um, we have it kind of in a grassroots and more informal process right now, uh, but I believe it is key. It is really important to add. Now, this question is going to be geared not necessarily towards the people in the field, but managers of companies and, and companies who they're, they're, they, they say they have a training program or they think they have a training program or they, they dream of having a training program, right? Until they see the actual cost of a training program. <laughs> <laughs> Different ballpark there. And, and yeah, I'm not asking you numbers, but as an, as an overall sense, do you feel that all the effort and the time and the blood and the sweat and then the IES invests in their employees in the training program, is that paying off with customer satisfaction? Um, and I can say unequivocally, yes, absolutely. You know, all companies have to make that choice. You know, you were just kind of elaborating a little bit on what that, what all was involved with that. Um, it is an expensive proposition, but again, I've, I've never worked for an organization more willing to invest in people. And what I would hope is, you know, that, that other people could get that opportunity as well is when you do take the time and you have qualified and, and people that are excited to come to work because they're gonna learn something and that they know that the, the company cares about moving them forward, not only professionally, but personally, that that attracts better customers. That attracts those type of, the type of companies that are also wanting to do that with their employees. And it's amazing how, you know, your best marketing tool out there are your people. Yep. So if you can make these types of decisions and invest in them, you're going to see the dividends pay off with that level of business coming back to you with your customer makeup. Oh, absolutely. And I tell people all the time, it's okay to fire a customer because right? you're going to have customers from time to time. All they care about is the bottom dollar. They don't care about the quality. They don't care about the performance. They just want it in for the cheap. That's not the kind of customer you want. It's not. And one yeah. of the ways that I would help vet out my customers when I used to run the peak performance department is after I got done reviewing the QA with the individuals in the field. And, and if I found any defects, we would come up with an action plan. Like I did a project once where they didn't put in the ladder rack correctly. So I said, here's what we got to do to fix it. Here's the date we got to get it fixed by. And I got their buy-in. So then I went to the customer and I reviewed the QA with the customer. And the customer was like, I didn't even know that was wrong. Thank you for educating me on that. And now what that does did they put, is- Did they put it in upside down? Well, no, what they did was they mounted the triangle brackets to the plywood with drywall screws. Oh, yeah, that's- <laughs> Yeah, that's a no-no. <laughs> that's a no-no. Yeah, no. yeah, I don't yeah, think that's no. one of our standards either. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so, I, I, so I explained that to the customer. I go, I didn't even know that. But what that does now is I'm now educating the customer. So now if the customer does happen to put out a competitive bid and- and, and another contractor is having to win it for whatever reason, if they're doing it wrong, I've educated the customer because, no, you know what? That's wrong. And this, that's good with that other company because they do it right. And they, then they'll take time to educate me. So I found it's, it's kind of a, it helps all the way around. Another common comment that I got on that post I mentioned earlier mm -hmm. was lack of knowledge by management, not knowing what the low voltage workers are doing. How do you guys address that issue? Uh, well, uh, first of all, great comment. Um, and I can say, you know, over the years that, that had been earlier when I came on board, it was definitely something that we battled as well. I think, uh, I think as you grow in this industry, you you know, the company has seen exponential growth and, you know, you get more, the managers seem to get more busy with the, the management and the meetings and the administrative side than what's going on in the field. And I think then the field feels like maybe they get disconnected. And how we battled that is just like, hey, you need to be in, you know, you need to be connecting with your teams. You need to get to know the people that are doing the work. Get to know and understand their, you know, what's their family situation. I mean, you just have to connect. And that's our biggest, you know, one of our catchphrase things is, hey, we make connections that connect the world. 
whether it's through social media or banking or whatever, right? You're making those connections. Hey, why don't you take a moment to connect with your actual team and learn and hear what are they going through? So uh, we, we've um, implemented, you know, project management standards and, hey, you need to be meeting with your team weekly. You need to be out on the, you know, we have job sites where obviously they're on job site 100% of the time because it's maybe a bigger project and that's where everybody's living or maybe they've got multiple projects and you need to make sure that you're making time to get out and spend time with the teams, walk it with them, um, talk to them about what their challenges have been um, and really get to know. So it's all about the relationship. It's all about connection. Yep. That's why the motto of my show is connecting at the human level so we can connect the world. I like it. Let me ask you this. Our industry is a male dominated industry. And we're starting to finally see some more diversity. What do you feel? Do you think that we're doing a good job at it? Can we improve? What are your thoughts on that? Well, we've already said there's a, you know, we have to be continuously improving Chuck, right? Um, I, I have seen that industry wide, you know, it's a women in construction week this week, for example. Um, and there's been a lot more attention given to that. I've seen some great profiles um, being, you know, on LinkedIn and, and some of the other platforms. So that's great to see. We obviously take that seriously. Um, we've always been diverse. You know, we've always had a lot of inclusion and, and included, you know, and this week we're talking about women. You know, women have been in our workforce. Um, you know, when we look at our industry numbers and diversity numbers, we're better than the industry average. Um, but always being a leader to providing a path to anyone who wants to learn a trade. We don't, we don't care. I mean, you know, if you are interested and you're invested and ready to make a commitment, we have people of all, all walks of life coming and joining us. And it's really, I think, been a huge part of why we're successful is because we try to keep that as an open door. Sounds like a winning plan. One final question. Yeah. If you could find the magic way to roll back the, the hands of time mm -hmm. and talk to a young 18 year old Shelly, what would you, what, what advice would you give her? I would probably tell her to think bigger, think bigger, you know, uh, going back to your question about diversity and, you know, being a woman in construction, being a woman in this industry, when I first, when Matt first called me to talk to me about, it, I'm like, I don't know if I belong there. I don't know if that's think bigger. You know, I, even 10 years ago, I would have probably said that. Um, I belong here, and I and you have something to offer. And there's a lot of strengths that I bring that you know they didn't have here before. Mm -hmm. So understanding that and giving yourself the room to develop and. I'm very fortunate. I, I came into a group that where management was absolutely all about it, right? We, I know that, that some people haven't had that experience with management. Um, so I was very blessed in that sense that they were like, you know, hey, we're providing a path to anyone who wants to learn and be a part of the IES family and, and learn a trade. So um, yeah, those two words, think bigger, Shelly. You can do better than that. Let's, let's think out here. It sounds like you can have a, a great executive team there at the company because yeah. there's a lot of companies out there. They're, they're, they have the mindset of the old guard. And I'll, I'll give you a real quick example. I remember, again, I'm showing my age here, but I was working for a company and I know, and I realized we need to get emails. So I talked to my boss, said, we need to have emails. He's like, why do we need emails? <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to write a justification report as to why we needed emails. That's just, that's just, again, that kind of ties in the younger generation have different ways of looking thing. And if you don't, if that person doesn't have that, that, that hunger for knowledge, that hunger for growth, there, there are people who have jobs and there's people who have careers. Yes. Yep. I would agree with that. And, and understanding that um, there is a difference is the first step with the, with leadership, right? You're not offering somebody a job. You're offer, offering them a career opportunity. Yep. And like I said, I went and had lunch with Matt Sims and it changed my life for real. You know, I never thought, I never thought about being in this industry. I had watched my husband like pulling cable and eventually over the years, you know, moving up and, and he joined a Denver based company that 
wanted him to open a branch. We lived in Tucson, Arizona at the time, and they wanted to open a branch. Well, he had to open it, you know, basically start business out of our house where I am literally receiving materials at my house while he's on a job site and helping put some spreadsheets together to help him track stuff, you know, you know, back, back in that time. And again, we should have thought bigger then too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's amazing if you just learn. I like that one. I'm going to write that one down. Think bigger. Just think bigger. Whatever you're thinking right now, think bigger. And you know what? I think, I I think I might title this podcast that think bigger. Of course, I got to get your permission to use that title though. Um, I grant that one. No problem. It's recorded. You can't take it back now. <laughs> as long as you put, you know, the little squiggly line and then Shelly after quote. But kind of hard to do that in the title, but I'll I'll I'm definitely put kidding. it in I'll put it in the uh, I'll put it in the uh, in the opening credits. <laughs> uh, any like parts? Any parting words of wisdom before we close out? I would say that everybody again can prove every day on something. And don't limit yourself to just what you're doing today. To management, I always say, hey, make sure whoever you're interviewing, you're interviewing them for the next position. You know, think of it as a career. Think of the people that I bring onto my team. I think, hey, this is somebody that needs to be able to replace me someday. Mm -hmm. You know, give them that opportunity and make sure we're providing all of the training, not just technical, all of the training that's going to be needed and you will have a much more successful workforce and you're going to have wildly happy customers. So yep. thank you. Absolutely. Right on the nose. Perfect. Thanks. I appreciate you joining me today. I'll have to have you back on as a guest. Maybe next time we could talk about the costs of, in, of poor quality. Oh. Yeah, because a lot of people know what you know, quality costs money because we have to have this training program, but they don't think about the cost of not having quality. What does it actually right. cost? Right. That's all. That's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> it is a whole nother discussion. And I, yeah. And when, and when everybody talks about rework, everybody's like, oh. Yes, exactly. That's why it's exactly. important. Got to learn how to do it right the first time. Exactly right. Well, thank you for coming on today. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you, Chuck. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. You too. Until next right. time, everybody. Remember, knowledge is power. That's it for this episode of today's podcast. We hope you were able to learn something. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. Also, leave a rating so we can help even more people learn about telecommunications. Until next time, be safe.